Pakistan is facing a fresh political crisis. On the one hand, the government has been trying to get former Prime Minister Imran Khan to appear in court in a corruption case. Imran, however, has refused to do so and his supporters and the police have repeatedly clashed. The Pakistani parliament has been called into session on March 22nd, presumably to discuss this issue. What is the agenda of the Pakistani government and why is it out to crack down on Imran Khan? Taimur Rahman, General Secretary of the Mazdoor Kisan Party of Pakistan, explains. I believe that the government wants to get a conviction uh, from Imran Khan, of Imran Khan, uh, so that uh, they can then use that conviction in the coming election and say, look, Imran Khan is corrupt and all his promises were fake and so on because government is strongly losing favor with the public because of the incredibly high rates of inflation. So they need a smoking gun with which they can then uh, attack Imran Khan. So that was going to be the Tosha Khana case. The Tosha Khana is a department where if uh, elected officials and uh, you know senior members of the government get a gift from anyone, you're supposed to submit that gift to the Tosha Khana. And um, you can use that uh, you know, while in office, etc. But um, it's not your private property because you've, you've, you've gotten that gift as a virtue or a, because of your connection with that particular office. So, um, in fact, politicians can then take that gift and then buy that gift from the Tosha Khana, uh, uh, you know, from the, from the department, etc. Uh, and they can pay a small price for that. But most politicians, what they do is that they, they take the, the thing and they don't pay the actual market value or what is required. And that's the case against Imran Khan as well, that he got uh, watches, etc., and other gifts from uh, various uh, heads of state, including Saudi Arabia, and that those that one particular watch was sold on the market, um, and the full price of that uh, watch was not given to the government, or the required price of that government was not paid to uh, was not paid to the government, and so that was the case against Imran Khan. Imran Khan, as you know, was shot. Uh, there was an assassination attempt against him, and there were several bullets in his legs. So during that period, he got a bit of respite from the um, from the High Court. Uh, that he could not appear in front of the High Court. But now that he has recovered, the High Court has been saying that you have to appear for the case, etc., etc. And he hasn't been appearing. And so then the um, uh, order to arrest him was issued by the High Court with vis-a-vis the Tosha Khana case. So that's what's going on. But the real politics behind it all is basically that they want to get a conviction against Imran Khan so that they can use that in, um, uh, in, the, in the coming election as a campaign slogan or something. Imran Khan has emerged as a powerful political force ever since his overthrow in 2022. He initially painted himself as a victim of a plot between the security forces, the political establishment and the US. He has also been able to successfully mobilize his supporters in large numbers. What is Imran Khan's current strategy? Well, on the one hand, he has been holding out a carrot uh, and he's tried to de-escalate some of these more radical rhetoric against the army, which was the case in the early period when his government was dismissed, that he hit out very directly against the army. And he hit out against America as well. In both these instances, I think he's come to realize that he has to somehow or the other tone down the rhetoric as far as America is concerned, as far as the army is concerned. So vis-a-vis America, his first sort of uh, backtracking on on what he had said earlier was, that I don't blame the Americans at all for what happened to me. It's our own people's fault, etc., etc. And with respect to the army as well, now he's begun. He's been he's been saying for quite a while that I'm ready to talk, but the army is not ready to talk with me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So he sort of tried to focus his fire more squarely only on the political opposition, and the earlier statements he made uh, against the United States of America and against the Pakistani army, he sort of withdrawn from those. Um, but it's not so far. It's not really working because obviously a lot of water has passed under the bridge, and uh, so the army is not warming up to him at any significant level. His recent strategy after, well, his earlier strategy was when he was displaced from government that he was going to build public pressure. And after the assassination, obviously, he had to take some rest and he couldn't continue that pressure. The party could, cannot continue that pressure without Imran Khan, who is their main pole of attraction. So he took a bit of a respite. And now it seems that he has been pushing once again that the public comes out and that uh, there should be rallies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So recently he announced a rally in Lahore. Uh, in Minto Park, and it seems that that has been that has caused the state also to become a little more aggressive, because uh, he seems to be once again stepping into the field, and he's saying, "Well, I'm, 
I'm going to conduct these rallies and I'm going to appear, whether by video or in person, etc. But he's once again pushing up the temperature, which is why there's a pushback against him as well. In the midst of this political chaos, the Pakistani economy continues to be in dire straits. The current government has completely failed to control the crisis and the IMF intervention has made it worse. What is the economic outlook for Pakistan? The government has entirely failed to curb inflation. In fact, before the government came into power, one of the principal campaign slogans against Imran Khan was that look at the amount of inflation he's caused. Mangai, Mukao, they did a march, etc. They tried to do a march, etc. They tried to make that their principal campaign slogan. And that has backfired very, very badly. Because after taking power, they have not been able to control inflation. In fact, inflation is at a 48-year high in Pakistan's existence. In the last uh, 50 years, Pakistan has not experienced this level of inflation. So, And uh, inflation is so high that government has had to raise interest rates. Um, you know, the State Bank of Pakistan has had to raise the, raise the interest rate to 20%, which is the highest I think it's ever been. And um, as a consequence, of course, with such high rates of interest, there isn't going to be much growth in the economy. That is all going to slow down. Um, There's widespread unemployment, widespread inflation and zero growth. So that is a terrible situation for Pakistan to be in. Uh, Economically speaking, if this was the main sort of, if this was the main campaign slogan that they had uh, was that we're going to fix the economy that Imran Khan broke, well, you know, um, so far, the results have not been delivered to the public. Now, you may make the, 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 the argument that, in fact, Imran Khan had wrecked the economy so terribly that it's going to take all of this stuff to, uh, and it's going to take a hard, sort of painful process for us to get back on track. Um, but I think the public is not going to buy that. The public really did want immediate relief. And I think for that reason, if there's an election held, uh, Imran Khan will be able to uh, perhaps even gain more votes than he did when he formed his, uh, uh, you know, government earlier, and that I think is something that the obviously the government at the time, the PDM government at this time, doesn't want, and the army also doesn't want because that's going to put them in contradiction with the elected government. So now there's lots of rumors that uh, Pakistan may decide to go for a, uh, you know, technocratic form of government. There is even a, a rumor that uh, Mifta Ismail and uh, Shahid Khakan Abbasi and other technocrats may be brought in. Well, these are also politicians, but you know, sort of a technocratic government may be formed to try and maneuver through the IMF conditionalities. It is principally because of the IMF that we are experiencing this level of inflation, uh, because we are part of a program with the IMF, and the IMF has said that for, to continue receiving assistance, uh, to continue to receive assistance from the International Monetary Fund to the tune of 1.2 billion dollars, we have to uh, increase the prices of um, diesel and petrol and gas, etc. And that, of course, increases the prices of electricity and so on. And that, of course, re- leads to a general cost push inflation all across the economy. So these are things that have been imposed by the IMF. In addition, the IMF has told us, well, you have to raise taxes. So we've also raised taxes. So for all these reasons and more, the economy is right now in, in a complete mess. Uh, of course, we are going to get the foreign exchange results from the IMF in exchange for all the inflation and unemployment that we have caused. And so international trade may continue. But what has happened to the domestic economy has been so terrible that I think the public will definitely vote out the PMLN in any coming election. And that's what they're really scared of. And that's why they need a conviction against Imran Khan. They need him to appear in court in order to get that conviction. They need him to cooperate with the court in order to get that conviction. And that's why Imran Khan is not cooperating. And that's why you see the standoff as you do uh, in Zaman Park. Thank you.